Troy Ancient Greek, Troia Troia or Troyas, Troyas and Ilion, Ilion or Ilios, Ilios, Latin, Troia and Ilium, Hittite, Wilisha or Truisha, Turkish, Truva or Troia was a city in the far northwest of the region known in late classical antiquity as Asia Minor, now known as Anatolia in modern Turkey, just south of the southwest mouth of the Dardanelles Strait and northwest of Mount Ida. The present-day location is known as Hisarlik. It was the setting of the Trojan War described in the Greek epic cycle, in particular in the Iliad, one of the two epic poems attributed to Homer. Metrical evidence from the Iliad and the Odyssey suggests that the name Ilion, Ilion formerly began with a digamma, Ilion Wilion. This is also supported by the Hittite name for what is thought to be the same city, Willusa. A new capital called Ilium from Greek, Ilion, Ilion, was founded on the site in the reign of the Roman Emperor Augustus. It flourished until the establishment of Constantinople, became a bishopric and declined gradually in the Byzantine era, but is now a Latin Catholic titular see. In 1865, English archaeologist Frank Calvert excavated trial trenches in a field he had bought from a local farmer at Hisarlik, and in 1868, Heinrich Schliemann, a wealthy German businessman and archaeologist, also began excavating in the area after a chance meeting with Calvert in Canakale. These excavations revealed several cities built in succession. Schliemann was at first skeptical about the identification of Hisarlik with Troy, but was persuaded by Calvert and took over Calvert's excavations on the eastern half of the Hisarlik site, which was on Calvert's property. Troy 7 has been identified with the city called Willusa by the Hittites the probable origin of the Greek Ilion and is generally but not conclusively identified with Homeric Troy. Today, the hill at Hisarlik has given its name to a small village near the ruins, which supports the tourist trade visiting the Troya archaeological site. It lies within the province of Kanakale, some 30 km southwest of the provincial capital, also called Kanakale. The nearest village is Tefikia. The map here shows the adapted Scamander estuary with Ilium a little way inland across the Homeric plain. Due to Troy's location near the Aegean Sea, the Sea of Marmara, and the Black Sea, it was a central hub for the military and trade. Troy was added to the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1998. Topic: <laughs> Homeric Troy. Ancient Greek historians variously placed the Trojan War in the 12th, 13th, or 14th centuries BC, Eratosthenes to 1184 BC, Herodotus to 1250 BC, and Durish of Samos to 1334 BC. Modern archaeologists associate Homeric Troy with archaeological Troy 7. In the Iliad, the Achaeans set up their camp near the mouth of the river Scamander, presumably modern Caramanders, where they had beached their ships. The city of Troy itself stood on a hill, across the plain of Scamander, where the battles of the Trojan War took place. The site of the ancient city is some 5 km from the coast today, but 3,000 years ago the mouths of Scamander were much closer to the city, discharging into a large bay that formed a natural harbour, which has since been filled with alluvial material. Recent geological findings have permitted the identification of the ancient Trojan coastline, and the results largely confirm the accuracy of the Homeric geography of Troy. In November 2001, the geologist John C. Kraft from the University of Delaware and the classicist John V. Luce from Trinity College, Dublin, presented the results of investigations, begun in 1977, into the geology of the region. They compared the present geology with the landscapes and coastal features described in the Iliad and other classical sources, notably Strabo's Geographia, and concluded that there is a regular consistency between the location of Schliemann's Troy and other locations such as the Greek camp, the geological evidence, descriptions of the topography, and accounts of the battle in the Iliad. Besides the Iliad, there are references to Troy in the other major work attributed to Homer, the Odyssey, as well as in other ancient Greek literature, such as Aeschylus's Orestia. The Homeric legend of Troy was elaborated by the Roman poet Virgil in his Aeneid. The Greeks and Romans took for a fact the historicity of the Trojan War and the identity of Homeric Troy with the site in Anatolia. Alexander the Great, for example, visited the site in 334 BC and there made sacrifices at tombs associated with the Homeric heroes Achilles and Patroclus. After the 1995 find of a Luwian biconvex seal at Troy 7, there has been a heated discussion over the language that was spoken in Homeric Troy. Frank Stark of the University of Tübingen recently demonstrated that the name of Priam, king of Troy at the time of the Trojan War, is connected to the Luwian compound Priamua, which means, "...exceptionally courageous". 
the certainty is growing that Willusa, Troy belonged to the greater Luwian speaking community. Although it is not entirely clear whether Luwian was primarily the official language or in daily colloquial use. Topic: <laughs> Search for Troy. With the rise of critical history, Troy and the Trojan War were for a long time consigned to the realms of legend. However, the true location of ancient Troy had from classical times remained the subject of interest and speculation. The Trode Peninsula was anticipated to be the location. Early modern travelers in the 16th and 17th centuries, including Pierre Bellin and Pietro della Valle, had identified Troy with Alexandria Troas, a ruined town approximately 20 km south of the currently accepted location. In the late 18th century, Jean-Baptiste Le Chevalier had identified a location near the village of Pinnerbassi, easing as the site of Troy, a mound approximately 5 km south of the currently accepted location. Le Chevalier's location, published in his Voyage de la Trode, was the most commonly accepted theory for almost a century. In 1822, the Scottish journalist Charles McLaren was the first to identify with confidence the position of the city as it is now known. In 1866, Frank Calvert, the brother of the United States consular agent in the region, made extensive surveys and published in scholarly journals his identification of the Hill of New Ilium, which was on farmland owned by his family, on the same site. The hill, near the city of Canakale, was known as Hisarlik. Schleman In 1868, German archaeologist Heinrich Schleman visited Calvert and secured permission to excavate Hisarlik. In 1871–73 and 1878–79, he excavated the hill and discovered the ruins of a series of ancient cities dating from the Bronze Age to the Roman period. Schliemann declared one of these cities at first Troy I, later Troy II to be the city of Troy, and this identification was widely accepted at that time. Schliemann's finds at Hisarlik have become known as Priam's treasure. They were acquired from him by the Berlin Museums, but significant doubts about their authenticity persist. Schliemann became interested in digging at the mound of Hisarlik at the persuasion of Frank Calvert. The British diplomat, considered a pioneer for the contributions he made to the archaeology of Troy, spent more than 60 years in the Trode modern-day Biga Peninsula, Turkey conducting field work. As Calvert was a principal authority on field archaeology in the region, his findings supplied evidence that Homeric Troy might exist in the hill, and played a major role in directing Heinrich Schliemann to dig at the Hisarlik. However, Schliemann downplayed his collaboration with Calvert when taking credit for the findings, such that Susan Hueck Allen recently described Schliemann as a relentlessly self promoting amateur archaeologist. Schliemann's excavations were condemned by later archaeologists as having destroyed the main layers of the real Troy. Kenneth W. Harl in the Teaching Company's Great Ancient Civilizations of Asia Minor lecture series sarcastically claims that Schliemann's excavations were carried out with such rough methods that he did to Troy what the Greeks couldn't do in their times, destroying and leveling down the entire city walls to the ground. Other scholars agree that the damage caused to the site is irreparable. Although his work is largely rejected, his recorded findings and artifacts added knowledge regarding ancient Western history. Dorfeld and Blegen After Schliemann, the site was further excavated under the direction of Wilhelm Dorfeld and later Karl Blegen These excavations have shown that there were at least nine cities built, one on top of the other, at this site. In his research, Blegen came to a conclusion that Troy's nine levels could be further divided into 46 sublevels. Korfman In 1988, excavations were resumed by a team from the University of Tübingen and the University of Cincinnati under the direction of Professor Manfred Korfman, with Professor Brian Rose overseeing post-Bronze Age Greek, Roman, Byzantine excavation along the coast of the Aegean Sea at the Bay of Troy. Possible evidence of a battle was found in the form of bronze arrowheads and fire-damaged human remains buried in layers dated to the early 12th century BC. The question of Troy's status in the Bronze Age world has been the subject of a sometimes acerbic debate between Korfman and the Tübingen historian Frank Kolb in 
In August 1993, following a magnetic imaging survey of the fields below the fort, a deep ditch was located and excavated among the ruins of a later Greek and Roman city. Remains found in the ditch were dated to the Late Bronze Age, the alleged time of Homeric Troy. It is claimed by Korfman that the ditch may have once marked the outer defences of a much larger city than had previously been suspected. The latter city has been dated by his team to about 1250 BC, and it has been also suggested, based on recent archaeological evidence uncovered by Professor Manfred Korfman's team, that this was indeed the Homeric city of Troy. Topic: Recent developments. The archaeological site of Troy was added to the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1998. In summer 2006, the excavations continued under the direction of Korfman's colleague Ernst Pernicke, with a new digging permit. In 2013, an international team made up of cross disciplinary experts led by William Aylward, an archaeologist at the University of Wisconsin Madison, was to carry out new excavations. This activity was to be conducted under the auspices of Kanakale Ansikismart University and was to use the new technique of molecular archaeology. A few days before the Wisconsin team was to leave, Turkey cancelled about 100 excavation permits, including Wisconsin's. In March 2014, it was announced that a new excavation would take place to be sponsored by a private company and carried out by Kanakale Ansikismart University. This will be the first Turkish team to excavate and is planned as a 12-month excavation led by Associate Professor Rustam Aslan. The university's rector stated that pieces unearthed in Troy will contribute to Kanakale's culture and tourism. Maybe it will become one of Turkey's most important frequented historical places. <laughs> Fortifications of the city The walls of Troy, first erected in the Bronze Age between 3000 and 2600 BC, are its main defense. The remains of the walls have been studied through the aforementioned excavations that shed light onto the historical city itself and the mythological implications as the walls protected the citadel during the Trojan War. The fortifications display the importance of defense to the Trojans and how warfare is a prominent issue for ancient cities. The walls surround the city, extending for several hundred meters, and at the time they were built they were over 17 feet tall. They were made of limestone, with watchtowers and brick ramparts, or elevated mounds that served as protective barriers. Throughout all of the phases, the walls served as the largest fortification to protect the Trojans against their enemies. Defense mechanisms like the walls of Troy shed light on the larger topic of warfare in ancient times, which was a significant issue in ancient Greece and in nearby locations such as Asia Minor. Historical Troy uncovered When Troy was destroyed each time, the citizens would build upon the previous settlement, causing the layers to pile on top of one another. The layers of ruins in the citadel at Hisarlik are numbered Troy I, Troy X, with various subdivisions. Troy I 3000 2600 BC, Western Anatolian Eb 1. Troy II 2600 2250 BC, Western Anatolian Eb 2. Troy III 2250 2100 BC, Western Anatolian Eb 3 early. Troy IV 2100-1950 BC, Western Anatolian Eb 3, Middle. Troy V 20th 18th centuries BC, Western Anatolian Eb 3, Late. Troy V 17th 15th centuries BC. Troy VIH Late Bronze Age 14th century BC. Troy VIIA C. 1300 to 1190 BC, most likely setting for Homer's story. Troy VIIB 112 th century BC Troy VIIB 211 th century BC Troy VIIB 3, until c. 950 BC Troy 8, c. 700–85 BC Troy X, 85 BC c. AD 500 Troy IV The first city on the site was founded in the 3rd millennium BC. During the Bronze Age, the site seems to have been a flourishing mercantile city, since its location allowed for complete control of the Dardanelles, through which every merchant ship from the Aegean Sea heading for the Black Sea had to pass. 
Around 1900 BC a mass migration was set off by the Hittites to the east. Cities to the east of Troy were destroyed, and although Troy was not burned, the next period shows a change of culture indicating a new people had taken over Troy. The first phase of the city is characterized by a smaller citadel, around 300 feet in diameter, with 20 rectangular houses surrounded by massive walls, towers, and gateways. Troy too doubled in size and had a lower town and the upper citadel, with the walls protecting the upper Acropolis which housed the Megaron-style palace for the king. The second phase was destroyed by a large fire, but the Trojans rebuilt, creating a fortified citadel larger than Troy II, but which had smaller and more condensed houses, suggesting an economic decline. This trend of making a larger circuit, or extent of the walls, continued with each rebuild, for Troy III, IV, and V. Therefore, even in the face of economic troubles, the walls remained as elaborate as before, indicating their focus on defense and protection. Schliemann's Troy II When Schliemann came across Troy II, in 1871, he believed he had found Homer's city. Schliemann and his team unearthed a large feature he dubbed the Sian Gate, a western gate unlike the three previously found leading to the Pergamos. This gate, as he describes, was the gate that Homer had featured. As Schliemann states in his publication Troja, I have proved that in a remote antiquity there was in the plain of Troy a large city, destroyed of old by a fearful catastrophe, which had on the hill of Hisarlik only its Acropolis with its temples and a few other large edifices, southerly, and westerly direction on the site of the later Ilium, and that, consequently, this city answers perfectly to the Homeric description of the sacred site of Ilios. Troy V was destroyed around 1250 BC, probably by an earthquake. Only a single arrowhead was found in this layer, and no remains of bodies. However, the town quickly recovered and was rebuilt in a layout that was more orderly. This rebuild continued the trend of having a heavily fortified citadel to preserve the outer rim of the city in the face of earthquakes and sieges of the central city. Troy VIIA, which has been dated to the mid to late 13th century BC, is the most often cited candidate for the Troy of Homer. Troy VIIA appears to have been destroyed by war. The evidence of fire and slaughter around 1184 BC, which brought Troy VIIA to a close, led to this phase being identified with the city besieged by the Greeks during the Trojan War. This was immortalized in the Iliad written by Homer. <laughs> Colvert's thousand-year gap Initially, the layers of Troy V and Seven were overlooked entirely, because Schliemann favored the burnt city of Troy II. It was not until the need to close, Colvert's Thousand Year Gap arose from Dorfeld's discovery of Troy v that archaeology turned away from Schliemann's Troy and began working towards finding Homeric Troy once more. Colvert's Thousand Year Gap 1800 to 800 BC was a period not accounted for by Schliemann's archaeology and thus constituting a hole in the Trojan timeline. In Homer's description of the city, a section of one side of the wall is said to be weaker than the rest. During his excavation of more than 300 yards of the wall, Dorfeld came across a section very closely resembling the Homeric description of the weaker section. Dorfeld was convinced he had found the walls of Homer's city, and now he would excavate the city itself. Within the walls of this stratum, Troy v, much Mycenaean pottery dating from late Helotic LH periods 3A and 3B c. C. BC was uncovered, suggesting a relation between the Trojans and Mycenaeans. The Great Tower along the walls seemed likely to be the Great Tower of Ilios. The evidence seemed to indicate that Dorfeld had stumbled upon Ilios, the city of Homer's epics. Schliemann himself had conceded that Troy V was more likely to be the Homeric city, but he never published anything stating so. The only counter-argument, confirmed initially by Dorfeld who was as passionate as Schliemann about finding Troy, was that the city appeared to have been destroyed by an earthquake, not by men. There was little doubt that this was the Troy of which the Mycenaeans would have known. <laughs> Troy 8 In 480 BC, the Persian king Xerxes sacrificed 1,000 cattle at the sanctuary of Athena Ilias while marching through the Hellespontine region towards Greece. 
Following the Persian defeat in 480–479, Ilion and its territory became part of the continental possessions of Mytilene and remained under Mytilenean control until the unsuccessful Mytilenean revolt in 428–427. Athens liberated the so-called Actian cities including Ilion and enrolled these communities in the Delian League. Athenian influence in the Hellespont waned following the oligarchic coup of 411, and in that year the Spartan general Minderos emulated Xerxes by likewise sacrificing to Athena Elias. From c. 410 to 399, Ilion was within the sphere of influence of the local dynasts at Lampsacus, Zenis, his wife Mania, and the usurper Medias, who administered the region on behalf of the Persian satrap Pharnabazus. In 399, the Spartan general Dersilitas expelled the Greek garrison at Ilion who were controlling the city on behalf of the Lampsacene dynasts during a campaign which rolled back Persian influence throughout the Trode. Ilion remained outside the control of the Persian satrapal administration at Dasylium until the Peace of Antalcidas in 387–386. In this period of renewed Persian control c. 387–367, a statue of Ariabarzanes, the satrap of Hellespontine Phrygia, was erected in front of the temple of Athena Elias. In 360–359 the city was briefly controlled by Charidamus of Aureus, a Euboean mercenary leader who occasionally worked for the Athenians. In 359, he was expelled by the Athenian Menelaus son of Arabios, whom the Ilians honoured with a grant of proxeny. This is recorded in the earliest civic decree to survive from Ilion. In May 334 Alexander the Great crossed the Hellespont and came to the city, where he visited the temple of Athena Elias, made sacrifices at the tombs of the Homeric heroes, and made the city free and exempt from taxes. According to the so-called last plans of Alexander which became known after his death in June 323, he had planned to rebuild the temple of Athena Elias on a scale that would have surpassed every other temple in the known world. Antigonus Monophthalmus took control of the Trode in 311 and created the new city of Antigonea Troas which was a synoikism of the cities of Skepsis, Kebron, Neandrea, Hamaxitos, Larissa, and Colonae. In c. 311–306 the Koinon of Athena Elias was founded from the remaining cities in the Trode and along the Asian coast of the Dardanelles and soon after succeeded in securing a guarantee from Antigonus that he would respect their autonomy and freedom he had not respected the autonomy of the cities which were synoikized to create Antigonea. The Koinon continued to function until at least the 1st century AD and primarily consisted of cities from the Trode, although for a time in the second half of the 3rd century it also included Myrlia and Chalcedon from the eastern Propontis. The governing body of the Koinon was the Sindrian on which each city was represented by two delegates. The day-to-day -day running of the Sindrian, especially in relation to its finances, was left to a college of five Agonothetai, on which no city ever had more than one representative. This system of equal rather than proportional representation ensured that no one city could politically dominate the koinon. The primary purpose of the koinon was to organize the annual Panathenaea festival which was held at the sanctuary of Athena Elias. The festival brought huge numbers of pilgrims to Ilion for the duration of the festival as well as creating an enormous market the which attracted traders from across the region. In addition, the Koinon financed new building projects at Ilion, for example a new theatre c. 306 and the expansion of the sanctuary and temple of Athena Elias in the 3rd century, in order to make the city a suitable venue for such a large festival. In the period 302 281, Ilion and the Trode were part of the kingdom of Lysimachus, who during this time helped Ilion Sinoikis several nearby communities, thus expanding the city's population and territory. Lysimachus was defeated at the Battle of Choropedium in February 281 by Seleucus I Nicator, thus handing the Seleucid kingdom control of Asia Minor, and in August or September of 281 when Seleucus passed through the Trode on his way to Lysimachia in the nearby Thracian Chersonese Ilion passed a decree in honour of him, indicating the city's new loyalties. In September Seleucus was assassinated at Lysimachia by Ptolemy Caranos, making his successor, Antiochus I Soter, the new king. In 280 or soon after Ilion passed a long decree lavishly honoring Antiochus in order to cement their relationship with him. During this period Ilion still lacked proper city walls except for the crumbling Troy V fortifications around the citadel, and in 278 during the Gallic invasion the city was easily sacked. 
Ilion enjoyed a close relationship with Antiochus for the rest of his reign, for example, in 274 Antiochus granted land to his friend Aristodechides of Assos which for tax purposes was to be attached to the territory of Ilion, and c. 275–269 Ilion passed a decree in honour of Metrodoros of Amphipolis who had successfully treated the king for a wound he received in battle. Troy Ix The city was destroyed by Sulla's rival, the Roman general Fimbria, in 85 BC following an eleven-day siege. Later that year when Sulla had defeated Fimbria he bestowed benefactions on Ilion for its loyalty which helped with the city's rebuilding. Ilion reciprocated this act of generosity by instituting a new civic calendar which took 85 BC as its first year. However, the city remained in financial distress for several decades, despite its favoured status with Rome. In the 80s BC, Roman publicani illegally levied taxes on the sacred estates of Athena Elias and the city was required to call on L. Julius Caesar for restitution, while in 80 BC, the city suffered an attack by pirates. In 77 BC the costs of running the annual festival of the Koinon of Athena Elias became too pressing for both Ilion and the other members of the Koinon and L. Julius Caesar was once again required to arbitrate, this time reforming the festival so that it would be less of a financial burden. In 74 BC the Ilians once again demonstrated their loyalty to Rome by siding with the Roman general Lucullus against Mithridates VI. Following the final defeat of Mithridates in 63–62, Pompey rewarded the city's loyalty by becoming the benefactor of Ilion and patron of Athena Elias. In 48 BC, Julius Caesar likewise bestowed benefactions on the city, recalling the city's loyalty during the Mithridatic Wars, the city's connection with his cousin L. Julius Caesar, and the family's claim that they were ultimately descended from Venus through the Trojan prince Aeneas and therefore shared kinship with the Ilians. In 20 BC, the Emperor Augustus visited Ilion and stayed in the house of a leading citizen, Melanopide's son of Euthydikos. As a result of his visit, he also financed the restoration and rebuilding of the sanctuary of Athena Elias, the Bulutarian Council House, and the theatre. Soon after work on the theatre was completed in 12–11 BC, Melanopides dedicated a statue of Augustus in the theatre to record this benefaction. <laughs> <laughs> Classical Ilium Ilion. A new city called Ilium from Greek Ilion was founded on the site in the reign of the Roman Emperor Augustus. It flourished until the establishment of Constantinople, became a bishopric in the Roman province Hellespontus civil diocese of Asia, but declined gradually in the Byzantine era. <laughs> Ecclesiastical history No later than the 4th century, it was a suffragan of the provincial capital's Metropolitan Archdiocese of Syzicus, in the sway of the Patriarchate of Constantinople. Several bishops are historically documented Orion attended the First Ecumenical Council at Nicaea in 325 Lucadius was among the schismatic group of Arian heretical bishops abandoning the Council of Sardica and Council of Philippopolis in 344 to convene their alternative synod. Theosebius partook in the Council of Chalcedon in 451. Johannes participated in the Second Council of Constantinople in 553. Nicetas attended the Second Council of Nicaea in 787. Georgius participated in the Council of Constantinople of 869–870 which condemned Patriarch Photios of Constantinople. Titular see. The diocese was nominally restored no later than 1926 as Latin titular bishopric of Ilium Latin, Ilio curiate Italian, Ilion cis Latin adjective. It is vacant for decades, having had the following incumbents, so far of the fitting episcopal lowest rank. Michel Joseph Bourguignon der Bigny, Jesuit Order, S.J. The 11th of February 1926, 1937.07. James Maguire, the 5th of October 1939, the 10th of October 1944. Eugene Joseph McGuinness, the 11th of November 1944, the 1st of February 1948. Leo John Steck, the 13th of March 1948, the 19th of June 1950. 
Francesco Maria Franco, the 10th of July 1950, the 7th of February 1968. Topic: Other views and voices on Troy. Topic: Alternative views on Troy's location. A small minority of contemporary writers argue that Homeric Troy was not at the Hisarlik site, but elsewhere in Anatolia or outside it e.g., in England, Pergamum, Scandinavia, or Herzegovina. These proposals have not been accepted by mainstream scholarship. <laughs> Hittite and Egyptian records In the 1920s, the Swiss scholar Emile Farr claimed that the place names Willusa and Taruisa found in Hittite texts should be identified with Ilion and Troja, respectively. He further noted that the name of Alaxandu, a king of Willusa mentioned in a Hittite treaty, is quite similar to Homer's Paris, whose birth name was Alexandros. Subsequent to this, the Tawagalawa letter was found to document an unnamed Hittite king's correspondence to the king of the Ayawa, referring to an earlier. Willusa episode", involving hostility on the part of the Ayawa. The Hittite king was long held to be Mursili II but, since the 1980s, his son Hattusili III is commonly preferred, although his other son Muatali remains a possibility. Inscriptions of the New Kingdom of Egypt also record a nation TRS as one of the sea peoples who attacked Egypt during the 19 and XX dynasties. An inscription at Deir el Medina records a victory of Ramesses III over the sea peoples, including one named Tertia, Egyptian, Tours III. It is probably the same as the earlier Teresh, Egyptian, Tris, W on the steel commemorating Merneptah's victory in a Libyan campaign around 1220 BC. These identifications were rejected by many scholars as being improbable or at least unprovable. However, Trevor Bryce championed them in his 1998 book The Kingdom of the Hittites, citing a piece of the Manapa Tarhunda letter referring to the kingdom of Willusa as beyond the land of the Siha River the classical Caicos and modern Bakarke and near the land of Laspa Lesbos. Recent evidence also adds weight to the theory that Willusa is identical to archaeological Troy. Hittite texts mention a water tunnel at Willusa, and a water tunnel excavated by Korfman, previously thought to be Roman, has been dated to around 2600 BC. The identifications of Willusa with Troy and of the Ayawa with Homer's Achaeans remain somewhat controversial but gained enough popularity during the 1990s to be considered majority opinion. That agrees with metrical evidence in the Iliad that the name Ilion for Troy was formerly Ilion with a digamma. In later legend Such was the fame of the epic cycle in Roman and medieval times that it was built upon to provide a starting point for various founding myths of national origins. The most influential, Virgil's Aeneid, traces the journeys of the Trojan prince Aeneas, supposed ancestor of the founders of Rome and the Julio-Claudian dynasty. In a later era, the heroes of Troy, both those noted in Homer and those invented for the purpose, often continued to appear in the origin stories of the nations of early medieval Europe. The Roman de Troy was common cultural ground for European dynasties, as a Trojan pedigree was both gloriously ancient and established an equality with the ruling class of Rome. A Trojan pedigree could justify the occupation of parts of Rome's former territories. On that basis, the Franks filled the lacunae of their legendary origins with Trojan and pseudo Trojan names. In Fredegar's 7th century chronicle of Frankish history, Priam appears as the first king of the Franks. The Trojan origin of France was such an established article of faith that in 1714, the learned Nicolas Freire was bastilled for showing through historical criticism that the Franks had been Germanic, a sore point counter to Valois and Bourbon propaganda. In similar manner, Geoffrey of Monmouth reworked earlier material such as the Historia Britannum to trace the legendary kings of the Britons from a supposed descendant of Aeneas called Brutus. Likewise, Snorri Sturluson, in the prologue to his Icelandic prose Edda, traced the genealogy of the ancestral figures in Norse mythology to characters appearing at Troy in Homer's epic, notably making Thor to be the son of Memnon. Sturluson referred to these figures as having made a journey across Europe towards Scandinavia, setting up kingdoms as they went. See also 
Ancient settlements in Turkey Cities of the ancient Near East Dardanians Trojan Historicity of the Iliad The Golden Bough mythology Trojan language Topic Notes Topic References Topic Sources and external links Official website General Troya Project and CERHAS 2013. Welcome to Troy. Troy. University of Cincinnati. Retrieved 8 August 2013. Archaeology Institut fur er und Frugicicht und Archaeologie des Mittelalters, Universität Tübingen, and Department of Classics, University of Cincinnati, Ohio 2010. Troya and the Trode, Archaeology of a Region, the New Excavations at Troy. Project Troya. Institut fur er u. Frugicicht. Archived from the original on 19 May 2005. Retrieved 8 August 2013, CS1 maint, multiple names, authors list link Troya Project 2004. Reconstructions. Troya VR. University of Tübingen. Archived from the original on 30 August 2013. Retrieved 8 August 2013. Heath, Sebastian, Tekic, Billor, eds. 2007–2009. Greek, Roman and Byzantine pottery at Ilion Troya. Classics Department, University of Cincinnati. Retrieved 10 August 2013. Heath, Sebastian, Mansperger, Dietrich, Rose, C. Bryan, Walrott, John Coins from Ilion Troya. Classics Department, University of Cincinnati. Retrieved 10 August 2013. Rudder, Jeremy B. 2013. Welcome. Aegean Prehistoric Archaeology. Dartmouth College. Retrieved 10 August 2013, Lesson 23, Troy v. Lesson 27, Troy 7 and the Historicity of the Trojan War. Geography Thomas, Neil 2003. Geology corresponds with Homer's description of ancient Troy. Udaily Archive. University of Delaware. Retrieved 10 August 2013. Ecclesiastical History Pius Bonifacius Gams, Series Episcoporum Ecclesia Catholicae, Leipzig 1931, p. 445 Michel Lequien, Orion's Christianus in Quatuor Patriarchatus Digestus, Paris 1740, Vol. 1, Col. 775–778 Bibliography – Works cited Allen, Susan July 1995. Finding the Walls of Troy, Frank Calvert, Excavator. American Journal of Archaeology. 99 379–407. doi.10.2307.506941. Retrieved 30 January 2013. Allen, Susan Huke Finding the Walls of Troy, Frank Calvert and Heinrich Schliemann at Hisarlik. University of California Press. ISBN 978-0-520-20868-1. Bauer, Susan Wise 2007. The Battle for Troy. The History of the Ancient World, From the Earliest Accounts to the Fall of Rome. Norton. pp. 253–58. ISBN 9780393070897. Carter, Jane Burr, Morris, Sarah P., eds. 1995. The Ages of Homer. Austin, University of Texas Press. ISBN 0-292-71208-1. Ladich, Joachim Troy and Homer, Towards a Solution of an Old Mystery. Oxford, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-926308-6 Schliemann, Henry Ilios. The City and Country of the Trojans, The Results of Researches and Discoveries on the Site of Troy and Through the Trode in the Years 1871-72-73-78-79. New York, Harper & Brothers. Wood, Michael In Search of the Trojan War. BBC Books, First Thus Edition. ISBN 978-0563201618. Topic further reading Easton, D. F., Hawkins, J. D., Sherratt, A. G., Sherratt, E. S. 2002. Troy in Recent Perspective. Anatolian Studies. 
Doi 10.2307/3643078. Shepard, Allen, Powell, Stephen D. EDS 2004. Fantasies of Troy: Classical Tales and the Social Imaginary in Medieval and Early Modern Europe. Toronto: Centre for Reformation and Renaissance Studies. Finding the Walls of Troy, Frank Calvert and Heinrich Schliemann at Hisarlik Book https colon slash slash lccn.lock. Gov. 98013101